Helen Houghton, and she joins us now. And I promise I won't hang up on you again. I'm really sorry, Helen. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Michael. It's great to be here. First uh, time I've chatted with you, so looking forward to it. Cool. Um, You've got a spotty history, but you ended up rebranding as the new Conservatives, I guess, to disassociate yourself from that spotty history. You're currently polling at 1%, um, according to the latest One News Varian poll. You've got, obviously, over 500 members. Um, and what makes you different than any other party that's out there? Why should people trust you with their vote, Helen? Yeah, well, let's just go back to that um, comment you made about the um, spotty history. I've been involved in New Conservative for five years now, and that's when uh, it was led by Leighton Baker. I came on board for the Christchurch East as a candidate there under Leighton, and then after Leighton, it was led by Ted and myself, so it wasn't only Ted, and as you said now, I'm the sole leader. So what was the question again? Um, what do we have that's different from the other parties? You did mention that we have been around for longer than all the other smaller, well, the more minor parties. Uh, we're a values-based party. We're not a freedom, you know, we're not part of that freedom movement. I mean, we obviously stand for freedom and that's one of our key things is about the Bill of Rights. But being a values-based party, it's important that um, that's, you know, highlighted because it helps our voters know our principles and priorities and, and they know what we're um, focused on, not on populism or built around a single issue or a personality cult, which unfortunately some of those other um, minor, more minor parties have. So there is real sustainable um, policies and, and, and stability in this party due to the principles and those um, those stand in the long run, which is why we have such a clear support and loyal party um, base who uh, are loyal to us and so we're loyal to them back standing for those policies. So originally, um, it would be fair to say that you have a Christian ideology that underpins the Conservative Party, yeah? Yeah, that, that's, um, that was there previously and it's still part of our principles. Right. Values-based is more important to me because we have uh, a number of different um, sections of society as members. So they're not all Christian, there's, there's some Christian, there's non-Christian, there's Jews, there's, um, you know, people of all types of faith. So I don't, you know, we, I don't focus on the fact that it's a Christian party. No, but I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't run away from it either, just quietly. Um, no, 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 certainly not. I mean, I, I'm a Christian. Okay, well, you know, I'd expect you to be so. Uh, so, and you're making the distinction between being, as you say, a values-based party, although it's a Christian values-based party to a large extent, or most extent, um, as distinct from New Zealand Loyal, um, I guess the New Nation Party, uh, the Freedom Coalition, which you think were more driven by a response to the COVID mandates and regulations, et cetera, yeah? Well, I think all of them have come about because of that, because, you know, even the probably the longest one would be NNP, and, and they came out directly around that same time, you know, as a, as a branch out of National Party, but they certainly were one of the key ones, figures, and then you had the, um, you know, those other figures that popped up after, after NNP, so... Mm. The, the history of the Conservative Party is though quite interesting. Oh, I've, uh, since MMP, um, since 1996, it's interesting. You almost got there, um, Christian folk and a Christian party, the Christian Coalition, in 1996. I think they got 4.5% of the vote. Um, and it's been downhill ever since then. The Conservative Party, even under Colin Craig, never tri uh, never got to the 5% and didn't look like troubling. Oh, I think it got to 3% though at some stage. Actually, I thought he got pretty close to around the four point something mark but I'd have to go back and double check that. Mm. But I mean the reality is that 5% threshold has been the, the, the killer. It's never actually got yep. critical mass to get over it. You're currently polling at 1%. Does it matter to you if you get elected or not at this coming election? I mean is, is that the aim to actually get elected or is it something else that drives you and the new Conservatives Helen? Oh, look, obviously everybody wants to be elected so that you've got a seat at the table. Um, and for democracy, obviously we know that, you know, as many voters out there as possible being represented in Parliament is the key. So, of course, we want to be in Parliament. However, 
Um, if you know anything about me, um, I'm not a career politician. I only got involved in politics five years ago. I was a school teacher. And um, so I'm advocating for around the education issues and advocating for children and what's happening there. And that's why I got involved in politics. And so that will continue long after the election. Um, the party itself, I mean, we, we stand up for so many different rights. And, and I have said to people recently, we're already winning because what's happened over the last three years or even four years since um, I started talking about the gender in schools, uh, the party's been talking about other issues for a long time now. And, and all of a sudden, this election year, other leaders are talking about these things that we brought out. And so that's a win. It's actually, um, you know, it's whether we get to Parliament or not this time, um, I mean, we have already achieved so much outside of Parliament. So imagine how much more we will do inside Parliament. So whether it's this election or the following one, I do believe we will get there because that social conservatives is such a growing um that you know the numbers are growing hugely um yeah and you know earlier on this year we registered at 2.7 we've had 2.3 we've had a lot of um you know 1.8 1.6 and 7 obviously at the moment i think we're sitting on 1.1 was the, the latest one i saw and you know i mean that's that's exciting because that's well, 50% of people out there, that's a definite, that's already a tick. And we know that there's a lot more than that, but because of those other more minor parties, that's kind of scattered some people at the moment, which is, you know, a little bit disappointing. Well, it um, is. I mean, let's of, be clear about this. I'm, I'm looking at you having the same ages as the Leighton Baker Party, uh, headed by Leighton Baker, and then former National MP Elf uh, Naro has set up this New Zealand Party, which almost seems a direct carbon copy of the new Conservatives in terms of its policy and its principles. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not a very good look, it's is it? Frustrating. To have, yeah, it's frustrating. Well, it, it, it is. It's frustrating, yeah. Michael, really yeah. frustrating. And it's, I'm sure it's frustrating for all those voters out there who, who, um, like I said, beginning of this year, we had 2.7. That's a clear, that's over halfway to the threshold. Mm. You know, and and that was before all of these other little parties sprung up. So it's like, you know, different personalities jump up, like I'm the next best thing. And, you know, they're, they're misleading the voters, in my opinion, because we've got a really strong, solid party here and there's no reason why they couldn't have actually supported us. Look, I'm all for, um, you know, lots of different groups and that standing up for for the rights and it's great to have a lot of different voices talking about what we're talking about but when it comes to the election knowing how crucial it is to get that five percent it's um absolutely nonsense that some of these people think that they're the right person they've started something just because they think they're the chosen one to lead is is that what <laughs> is, is is that the reason why and when i look at you look at the leighton baker party for example and alfred naro's uh, new ne new zeal party uh, which have come onto the scene, as you say, a lot later than you, but have pretty much the same ages or the same political philosophy anyhow. Is, is, mm. is that, do you think because both those two gentlemen would rather lead um, minority than uh, be second or third in a, minority, a, a majority? Oh, look, you know, they'll disagree with me, but, um, you know, you're here being honest about things, and I think it's important for voters to have that honest conversation. We we all we all have spoken with. Um, there was a number of us that were around the table a couple of years ago, and you know, many of us were prepared to work together. Even recently, like a month or less than a month ago, there was four four of us major um, leaders around the table. Basically, one actually didn't end up making it, which was unfortunate because. It was a time when I thought, actually, this was the first time I felt like we were going to do something and it could work. Um, however, yeah, you know, I can't divulge all the conversations, but one of those leaders, um, you know, talked about respect. And I'm like, well, that works both ways, because if you are coming to a party that's been uh, ongoing, stable for 12 years and expecting them to actually dissolve and come under you, that's hugely disrespectful. And so, yeah, there's some there's some bigger conversations that need to be held in this. So I, I ask those people to look inside and look at themselves about, um, yeah, why they think that they are the chosen one. Um, I guess in some ways, if you all get fractions of a vote this election, 
that might impart some lessons, though, might it? I mean, there might be a silver lining to the Mm. bad outcome. What do you think? Oh, I agree. I agree with you. I mean, you know, yeah, the voters all the voters all um, decide at the end of the day. They know the people who have been out not just for this election year and popped up a month or two before the elections. They know the those of us who have been working in the field, speaking at select committees, standing up for the children, standing up for all the freedoms. You know, not just those single issues. They know what personality politics looks like. They know celebrity politicians. They know sensationalists and opportunists. Um, the voters are intelligent people. And, you know, yeah, need I say more about that? I'm sure they can figure it out themselves. And, yeah, we ask them to continue to look at new conservatives because we're about restoring New Zealand and we want people to smile again.